Hello, this is Pastor Nelson at Westmoreland PH Church. This is Youth Night, the fifth Wednesday of the month. And tonight, Pastor Nate has a very exciting message standing out. We have some beautiful music by our youth group, 12th Reflection. Pastor Nate is playing the guitar. We have Derek Wilson on the piano. Dylan Simmons is on the drums. And Davon Rogers is our lead singer. We're so proud of this, these young men. This service was recorded April the 23rd, 2019. It was the last time that this group has played together. Pastor Nate is now married, and soon he will finish his college education. Derek Wilson is a student at Appalachian State University. Dylan Simmons is now serving his country in the United States Marines. Davon Rogers is still attending high school. These young men are moving on, and they are preparing for their future. The first song that they will sing tonight is Church, Take Me Back. I'm sure that's the cry of so many people across America today. I want to go back to church. So let's join our youth in the youth service tonight, and let's worship the Lord together. It, it, it's really a pleasure to be able to sing for you guys tonight. Um, I hope that, you know, us singing can be a blessing to you all. Uh, this is the last time that Dylan and I are actually playing for the youth band. So yeah, it's the like official last, last time. So we, we hope we can like ace it and we're going to try our best to, um, and I hope that everyone can enjoy it and we're going to try to enjoy it too. Cause I mean, we want it to be fun. It's our last time. Uh, we will be back at some point in time, but <laughs> stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Um, and so as soon as we're ready here, we'll go ahead and play our first song. Um, so our first song is actually going to be Church Take Me Back. Uh, we played this one the last Sunday that we actually sang. So it's fairly new on our repertoire, um, but we wanted to bring it back because I feel like everyone really enjoyed that one. So we're, we're going to do our best again. Maybe we improved a little bit. Maybe we didn't. Who knows? But we're going to definitely do our best, and I hope you can enjoy it. You ready? Alrighty. It's the time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing. Every more broken than the last Take me back To the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back To a preacher and a verse Where they see me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Tried to walk on my own, but I wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross It's not a trophy for the winners It's a shelter for the sinners And it's right where I belong Take me back to a preacher 
think the very first one that we ever played. Uh, and it's what Mer Your Mercy did for me. I don't think it was the first one. I don't. It well, was very close to the first one. So we're just going to go maybe. with it. We're going to pretend maybe. what I just said was very correct. So we're going to sing this one for you. Hopefully it's as good as it was the very first few times we played it. Uh, it's been a little bit, but we're going to do our best. say that I'm going to give you a complex word because I want to give you the truth tonight. And the truth isn't always something that is groundbreaking because maybe the ground's already been broken because the truth has already been laid in place and it's been there for years and years and years. So today I want to talk to you about standing out because, you know, we live in a society where fitting in is very desired and fitting in that's the norm. Everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants to be welcomed, and they want at all times to be accepted by everyone. And while that is a good thing to be accepted, but it's not a good thing to be accepted for the wrong reasons. And I'm going to point out two ways to you today that being um, standing out can be accomplished. I have two major points. And the first one is investing into your relationship with God. So we've all had a close friend, right? Someone we've grown close to, but it doesn't start out that way. You don't meet that person, and you're not immediately going to be buddy-buddy with them all the time. You establish common interests. You talk 
and you just get closer over time the more you spend time with each other. But the same things happen the opposite way. I'm sure many of us have lost a close friend. Rather, it have been because of they moved away, you stopped talking, or you just had an argument or something like that, whether it was a silly argument or something serious. But the key there is communication stops. You do not talk to that person anymore. So communication, if it's communication is key in relationships, why wouldn't it be um, key in our relationship with God? So when you're spending time with God, you're investing into that. And that's important for you as a Christian because there are many ways to communicate with God. And I'm sure you know these, but I'm going to just state some of them. We pray. That's us talking to God. We meditate and read our Bibles. That's God talking to us. God gives us signs and people we meet, events that occur. And then there's praise and worship, which is an opportunity for communication both ways. So the more we invest time into these practices and spend time with fellow Christians, including going to church and fellowshipping opportunities, the more our relationship with God grows. It's a very logical, common idea, you know, because God's your father. You know, if you spend time with your father, you're closer to your father. But how does this allow us to stand out? Hebrews 6.1 states, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. So the closer you grow to God, the more the others will see you in Christ because of your maturity in Christ. The more you're mature, you know, maturity is not something we have a lot today. You know, we live in a very immature society, as sad as it is to say. It's something that's being lost. People don't know how to handle themselves, not just from a Christian standpoint, but on a day-to-day basis. And it's only going to get worse because we, you know, as a society, are, we, um, we're letting people slip out of our grasp. And we are refusing to stand out. Um, so God will naturally cause you to stand out as you invest into his word because he's not going, you're not going to be in an opportunity and have the position to share to other people God's word if you're fitting in with the ordinary. God doesn't want you to fit in with the ordinary because if someone notices, hey, there's something different about that person, you know, they're going to want it. If they're going through depression, if they're having the saddest time of their life or they just, they're tired of abusing their bodies with all these terrible things and they're looking for a change, they're going to look for a change. And you need to be there and be that opportunity to be the change. So it's important that we invest ourselves into God's word so that we have the knowledge to tell them and the wisdom of God in us to spread to them so that we can stand out in an ordinary society. After this, uh, my second point is be uncomfortable. You need to be uncomfortable in your everyday life. And that doesn't sound very fun, does it? You know, no one likes being uncomfortable because we live in a very comfort-based society. We want luxury cars. We want roomy houses, you know. If a house doesn't have enough closets, people complain because it's not comfortable because we want stuff and it gets cluttered and it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not comfortable anymore. We focus on memory mattresses. We eat comfort foods. Even the seats in the church are comfort. You know, they're made for comfort. They have cushion in them. (laughs) They're not hard wooden benches. So, but I want to point out that comfort isn't a bad thing by nature. It's not bad that you're sitting on a cushioned seat. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's okay. It's okay and to work hard and enjoy things that bring us comfort. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when the things that bring us comfort become the driving forces in our lives, we become content and they become dangerous. So avoid your comfort zone. It's easy to stay in our little bubble of comfort on a day-to-day basis in the same routine. I'm going to be honest. Some days I go to work, I'll just come home, I'll relax, watch some Netflix, play some video games, and that'll be it for the day. I might spend some time with my fiance if she's free, but, you know, that depends. So as you see, you know, it's a routine, something we do over and over and over. I'm going to encounter the same people over and over and over. I'm going to do the same things over and over and over. So you can minister to these people that you see every day, but why would you limit yourself to ministering to just a set amount of people when you could be ministering to the masses like Jesus wanted us to, to share the word? Even if it's person by person, it doesn't have to be speaking to a crowd, you know? You're supposed to have these interactions. So whether it's going out in your community and just talking to people, community events, and, you know, sometimes I go out to a basketball court, you know, there's a lot of people that are unreached by God out there. So we have to 
break the mold, break our ordinary schedules, no matter how uncomfortable that may be. So how can you stand out by being uncomfortable? I have three subcategories here. Be selfless. And this is simple. You don't even need a different word to define selfless, less of yourself. Because the flesh, we, we want to focus on what we have, what we can do. It's about us. But that's not God's mentality that's instilled in us when we're reborn again. It's man's mentality, and it's something that's driven in by society. So if you're at work, you know, you can go, you can do your job, you can do your task and leave. But what if you have a coworker who's struggling with something they're doing, who says you can't go out of their way and help them with their task, even if it means you have to stay late for that day? Who says you can't bring in coffee for the office if it's just, you know, something as a nice gift? And at school, you can go to your classes. You can go and you can learn. You can have lunch with your normal friends. But what if at lunch you sat with someone that wasn't very popular and didn't have many friends? Because that doesn't only get you noticed by that person. Everyone else notices that, too. Because your friends are going to notice it because you're not sitting with them. Then the other people are like, why are they sitting with them? And the person you're sitting with is going to have possibly a friend for life at that point, And you could be saving them from something terrible because they have received some of God's love. So by performing these tasks we wouldn't normally do to go out of a way, we are leaving our comfort zone and showing God in us, making us stand out. The less we focus on us, the more we focus on God and the more we contribute to his kingdom. So my second point, be countercultural. This is something we kind of talked about in the back last, um, the Sunday before last. Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. So the world and our flesh also are occupied with popularity. We want the popular music, the popular, movie, music, popular movies and celebrities. And I don't want to throw out and, you know, think all these things are bad. Because you can listen to modern music and it not be bad. You can listen to, watch a modern movie and it not be bad. Not all celebrities do bad things. But when these sources point towards topics that can damage our bodies or reputations, we have to be careful. Because the more you are exposed to profanity, drugs, sexual references, and alcohol, the more likely you are to participate in those actions involving these substances which can degrade you physically, mentally, and um, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually. So if we don't conform to the world and do fill our spirits with godly sources of information, then we will shine. So by being uncomfortable and stepping outside of our comfort zone and avoiding the cultural norms, you're going to be noticed. Because if you look at music artists today, right? They all pretty much seem like they follow the same mold. So if just from you know a basic thought um, pattern, if someone brings out something different, it's more likely to be noticed if they have a large enough platform, right? If a movie, you know, I've noticed how much Christian movies get press coverage because they're different. They're not all these movies, you know, the remakes, all these sequels, you know, then there's something different that comes out and people notice it. So who says that we can't be different the same way those Christian movies are different from the norm and go out into our everyday lives and make a difference. So finally, um, the peace and joy that only God will provide will make people wonder what is different about you and leads me to this. Follow God's will and guidance of the Holy Spirit. So this directly goes back into investing your relationship with God because Romans 8, 20, 8 26 through 27 says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for, for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. They're perfectly intertwined. You know, the, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he's guiding you in your everyday life. You have no doubt that you're going with God's will because that is God's will. So, you know, it's important to have the Holy Spirit's, Spirit's guidance in your life. And it's important to follow God's will and pray that every move you would make would be in God's will. So I didn't have a very long sermon for you tonight, but I hope that it really dwells on you because 
I'm going to do something different, and I'm not going to end in an altar call. I want to end in a call to action. I want to end with each and every one of you having the mindset that you can go out there and you can change the world. And it doesn't have to be out there. It can be in here. Changing the church. Because how are we going to be a structurally sound people if we ourselves are falling apart? You know, what if that means taking the extra job opportunity in the church as a volunteer? What if that means taking a kid home or just helping prepare for something? You know, you could be the person to come out of the way and step out and do that because you're going to make a difference. You're going to stand out because active members of a church do a lot more than passive members just by def definition. So we need to be active in here and out there. We need to stand out, and you know, that's what I have for you today. Thank you for joining us for our Westmoreland Wednesday night youth service. 
I was so glad to be able to see each of you join us for our stream, and I hope you can join us again in the future. My sermon tonight was about standing out, and one of the most important steps in standing out is the first step, which is accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. So for those who weren't able to, or haven't been able to yet, or want to rededicate their lives, I would like to lead you in a prayer of salvation. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing us just to find you in our lives, Lord God, and allowing us to know that you are the Savior. And Lord, we come here right now asking you to come into our hearts and become the Savior of our lives because we know you died on the cross for our sins so that we could be more like you and have a relationship with you, Father. Lord God, we pray that you help us to continue in our Christian walk after the step to become better people and better Christians and be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please come again.